Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com and we are going to be discussing poker math that every player needs to know to succeed at poker. To be a great poker player, you do not need to focus on abstract math or complex problems. Instead, you simply need to know how to figure out the most important and the most common situations you're going to encounter at the poker table over and over and over again. If you focus on the fundamentals and the math Behind those fundamentals, you're going to find that learning to navigate these frequent common spots is going to become relatively easy for you so that you can make good, strong decisions in all of these situations that you encounter at the poker table. So first things first, let's discuss equity, expected value, and equity realization. All poker math fundamentals begin with equity and expected value. So what? is equity and what is expected value? Well, equity is how often you will win the pot assuming you get to see the showdown. This is a frequency number. For example, say you have ace-king and I have nine-seven. In this situation, you can use a free program called Equilab. You can search it, just search Equilab. Type in your hands, ace-king offsuit, nine-seven offsuit, click evaluate, and you'll see that the ace-king wins about 64% of the time and the 9-7 wins about 36% of the time. That is the equity of each hand. 64% for ace-king, 36% for 9-7. Your expected value, or EV, is how much a decision is expected to win or lose in the long run. This will be a dollar amount or a chip amount. So your equity is a frequency, a percentage. The expected value is going to be a dollar amount or a chip amount. So how do we calculate our expected value of any decision? Well, the expected value is the percentage of the time you win times the amount you win plus the percentage of the time you lose times the amount you lose. So let's say on the turn, your opponent goes all in for $100 into a $200 pot. And let's just presume that you know your hand is gonna win against your opponent's range 30% of the time. We'll discuss how to figure that out later in this course. So in this scenario, our expected value is 30% times $300, that's the amount we win. We win the $200 pot plus our opponent's $100 bet, plus 70% of the time, 0.7, we lose $100. So we solve for this, we have $90 minus $70 equals $20 profit to call. That means that even though in this situation we're only going to win 30% of the time, we are gonna make $20 on average every single time we make this call. Poker is a long run game. You do not care, or at least you should not care if you win or lose this individual pot. You should care about making profitable decisions over and over and over and over and over again. And if you consistently make this call, you are going to make money, even though you're gonna lose 70% of the time. And that's something that's kind of hard for a lot of people to wrap their heads around. They think they're supposed to win 90% of the time or 100% of the time, but no, 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 no. You can actually lose quite often and still make a lot of money. For example, say you know you're gonna lose 99 out of 100 times, and you have to risk $1. But say when you win, you win a million dollars, right? So even though you're gonna lose 99 out of 100, if you're putting in one to try to win a million, that's obviously a very, very, very good deal. And you know you don't find spots that profitable in poker, but situations like this occur all the time where you're gonna win 30% of the time, and you know because the pot is so large, you can make a profitable call, even though you're gonna lose more often than not. Let's discuss equity realization. This refers to how much of your actual equity you realize. And the way you solve this is you take your expected value and you divide it by your equity. For example, say we do have this scenario here where you have ace king and I have the nine seven. Let's say you raise from first position and I call from the big blind with the nine seven. And the flop comes queen jack nine. Okay, you have the ace king, you have the worst hand, I flopped a pair. On this flop though, if I check and you bet and I call and on the turn, it's kind of anything besides a nine or a seven. If I check and you bet again, I'm going to fold. Despite having the worst hand on the flop, you are going to make me fold out a better hand, which means you are going to over realize your equity. Alternatively, say you raise from under the gun. I call from the big blind with my nine, seven and it comes jack six, two. I check, you bet, I fold. And in that scenario, I have six outs to make the best hand, but by betting, you take away my equity. So if your equity realization is greater than 100%, it means you're going to over-realize your equity. And this is usually going to be the case when you have the positional advantage over your opponent, typically when you get to act last, 
or when your range is just way stronger than your opponent's range. For example, when you raise from first position, you should be raising only very good hands, whereas when I'm calling from the big blind, I should have a lot of weak hands. So this is a spot that comes up all the time where the big blind is going to drastically under-realize their equity. If your equity is less than 100%, it means you're going to underrealize your equity, which is where you are in the scenario in the big blind, usually when you are out of position and your range is generally weak. And uh, you may think, how in the world are you supposed to figure this out? And the answer is, you're not at the poker table. This isn't a concept you should be aware of, but you don't need to figure out exactly how much of your equity you are going to realize when you are playing. But you need to be aware of situations where you should underrealize and overrealize your equity, and that's going to help you develop and drive your overall strategy. I realize so far these three concepts, equity, expected value, and equity realization are kind of nebulous topics, but they are very important to keep in mind as we move forward because next we're going to be discussing pot odds, which is something you actually do need to be able to figure out at the table. Have you ever studied GTO poker strategies and thought it actually made you worse at poker? Well, it probably did. And that's why we have created Peak GTO the easiest place to learn GTO poker strategies where you'll be learning directly from top pros so that you can improve your skills, bump up your poker ELO rating, and actually get really good at poker. Get started for free right now. Now let's discuss pot odds, which are something you need to be aware of and able to calculate when you are sitting at the poker table. Whenever you are facing a bet, you have to risk some amount of money or chips to win some other amount of money or chips. And if you will win the pot, on average, more often than your pot odds dictate you should win, you should continue in the pot. And if you will win less often than your pot odds dictate you should, you should fold or bluff. So how do we convert our odds to a percentage of the time we need to win? Well, pot odds are traditionally expressed as the amount you win to the amount you risk. This little colon here means two. So if your opponent bets 100 into a, two, into a 100 pot, so they're betting the size of the pot, you have to call 100, which is the amount they're betting, to win their 100 bet plus the 100 pot, which is 200 total. That gives us the amount we will win, 200, to the amount we're risking, which is 100 pot odds which can be simplified to two to one pot odds. So how often does that mean we need to win? A lot of people get this wrong, so make sure you pay attention. To convert odds to a percentage of the time that you need to win, you divide the second number by the first number plus the second number. Here's the formula. In this scenario, the second number is 100 divided by the second number, 100, plus the first number, 200, which is one third, which equals 33% of the time. So when your opponent bets the size of the pot, if you'll win more than 33% of the time, you should continue. And if you win less often than that, you should fold, assuming there is no more money remaining to bet. And if you think about it, it makes sense, right? You're putting in one unit to try to win their unit plus the pot unit. So you're putting in one third of the total pot. Therefore, you need to win a third of the time or more. A lot of people get this wrong by dividing the second number by the first number, which would be one divided by two, which is 50%, but that is completely incorrect and very, very wrong. So make sure you follow this formula. Let's go through some examples to make sure you fully understand how to do this. Let's say your opponent bets 100 into a 400 pot. Well, we have to call 100 to win 500, giving us 500 to 100 odds. You can do the same math as before. Second number, 100 divided by second number plus the first number, which is 100 divided by 600 or one divided by six. And this is 16.8% of the time. So if we're going to win more than 16.8% of the time in this situation, we need to stick around. In this hand, we have the ace, 10 of spades for two over cards and a gut shot straight draw. That's going to be in perfectly fine shape. So we get to stick around in that spot. What if your opponent bets... 1,500 into an 8,000 pot. Well, now we have to win. Uh, we have to put in 1,500 to win 9,500, giving us 9,500 to 1,500 odds. We can do this math again. 1,500 divided by 1,500 plus 9,500. Remember, this 9,500 is their bet plus the pot, plus the amount we're putting in, and that gives us 13.6% of the time. So, if we're going to win more than 13.6% of the time on average, we should stick around. And if we will not, 
we should fold. A very, very important concept that comes from pot odds is that bet size matters a lot. As you face smaller and smaller bets, you should continue more and more often because you have to risk so little to win a lot. And as you face larger bets, you should be continuing less often because you're risking a lot to win relatively little. Here's a chart listing common pot odds, and I recommend you screenshot this, memorize it, because these situations are going to come up over and over and over again. You do not want to be sitting there at the poker table thinking, okay, they bet 25% pot. That means I need to win how much? Let me do the math. No, if you can just memorize this chart, it's going to make your life really, 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 really easy. Let's start at the bottom of the chart. If your opponent bets tiny, 25% pot, you're getting five to one odds, which means you need to realize 17 points percent equity or more to continue. If they bet 33% pot, you're getting four to one pot odds. It means you need to realize 20% equity in order to continue. If they bet bigger, let's say 66% pot, you're getting 2.6 to one pot odds, which means you need to realize 28%. If they pot it, like we looked at earlier, you're getting two to one odds, which means you need to win 33% of the time. If they bet more than the size of the pot, a lot of people very, very incorrectly think you need to win a ton of the time to justify calling if they bet more than the size of the pot, but that is not true. Take a look at this. If they bet 150% pot, like if the pot's $100 and they bet $150, you're getting 1.7 to 1 odds, which means you need to win 38% of the time. And if they bet two times the size of the pot, 200 into 100, you're getting 1.5 to 1, which means you need to realize 40% equity in order to call. Nowhere near 50% or 80% or 100% like a lot of people think they need to win when they're facing a big bet. So now that we know that, how do we figure out how often we will win when we have a hand that is behind and drawing? Well, you want to ask, how often will I improve going to the river? And then you're going to compare that to your pot odds to see if it makes sense for you to continue because if your opponent bets really small, even if you're behind, like we've already seen, you should be continuing a lot of the time. And if they bet really big, you should be folding in some scenarios. So let's take a look at this spot. We're going to take a look at a very hypothetical scenario where you know somehow your opponent has ace queen and you have jack 10 of hearts on the ace of hearts, queen of hearts, four of diamonds, jack of spades board. So how many outs do we have to beat our opponent? You always need to be thinking about this when you have a drawing hand. When you have a flush draw, you typically have nine outs. When you have an open-ended straight draw, such as... Uh, four cards in a row, right? Say, say you have 9-8 and the board is 7-6-2. In that scenario, you have eight outs to make the straight, plus maybe your top pairs are good if you make those. In this scenario, we have a flush draw, so we have nine outs. Notice all the cards that make a flush give us the best hand. We have three additional outs to make a straight with a king. You may say, don't we have, aren't there four kings remaining in the deck? Well, we're already counting one of them in the flushes, right? The king of hearts gives us a flush, actually a royal flush. But we already counted that one. So we have nine flush cards and three straight cards. So that is 12 outs. Plus, if we get a jack, we also improve to the best hand. And there are two of those remaining in the deck. So we have 14 outs total in this situation. But how often does that mean we're going to get there? Well, there's a simple formula that will give you roughly the amount of the time you're going to get there, depending on if you're on the turn or the river. This is the rule of four and two. If you're on the flop with two cards to come, you can multiply your number of outs by four. And that will tell you roughly how often you are going to get there. If you're on the turn, you multiply your number of outs by two because there's only one card to come. And that will give you roughly how often you will improve. So in this scenario, we have 14 outs times two because we're on the turn going to the river. 14 times two is 28. That means we are going to win with our straight or flush or three of a kind roughly 28% of the time. But that does not tell us alone if we should call or fold because we need to figure out what pot odds we are getting. If your opponent... Let's say they potted it. Well, in this scenario, we know we need to win 33% of the time. This is assuming we are all in and there's no more money to be bet on the river. In that scenario, we should fold because we need to win 33% of the time, but we're only going to win 28% of the time, right? So in this scenario, we are going to win less often than the pot odds that take we should, so we should fold. If they bet a smaller amount, let's say they bet 50% pots such that we need to win 25% of the time. Well, in that scenario... We should call because 28% is more than 25%. So depending on the pot odds we are getting, we should either call or fold in this situation and all situations when we have a drawing hand and we know we're, we're going to only win when we improve. Let's say instead of having 14 outs, we had eight outs. 
with an open-ended straight draw. Well, in that scenario, you'd have eight outs times two, which is 16% to win. So if we're facing a 25% pot bet on the river and we know we only win when we make a straight, we should fold. If we're facing a bigger bet, of course, we should fold too. But if we're facing a smaller bet, like let's say 10% pot or 15% pot, you can use a little bit of common sense to know that means you're going to need to win less than 17%. And since we know we're about 16%, we know we can call the smaller bets. But if they make a bigger bet in that situation, we should be getting out of the way. And a very important concept, like we already discussed, that does come from pot odds is that bet size matters. As they're betting smaller and smaller and smaller, we have to continue more and more often. And I mean, imagine your opponent bets one one hundredth of the size of the pot. Well, if you have any outs, you get to stick around, right? But if your opponent bets 1,000% of the size of the pot, they bet $1,000 into a 100 pot, you should be folding with pretty much all your draws. So always keep that in mind and always consider your pot odds whenever you are facing any bet in any scenario. And definitely, 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 definitely make sure you fully understand this formula. This is something you need to be able to figure out at the poker table or in the ideal world, just figure out all of these common bet sizes and the equity needed to call. Memorize those and that's gonna make your life super duper easy when you are playing at the poker table.